Hey, hey, welcome back to a new episode of The Outfit. I'm Chris. Ains and Ugly. This little guy. Hey. How good is this spot? Check this out. Complete surprise. <laughs> we had no idea this was even here. Like around two hours south of Rome, we got recommended this area of Portsmouth Lagoon. And this morning we just went for a little explore, like took a four drive track. Yeah, and so here we are. <laughs> we didn't know it was a four wheel drive track. We just knew there was a track heading kind of into this general area. So I had full tire pressure and then it suddenly got kind of soft and boggy. So I'm just <laughs> dropping all the tire pressure now so that when we come back out of here, it should be relatively easy because we did go down a pretty steep, soft downhill section. So I was thinking of maybe going for a dive out here, but the tide's so low at the moment because it's neap tide today tied so low that there's a lot of breakers coming up over this reef so I won't go quite yet at least maybe I'll wait till this arvo but through here is a gnarly mangrove system so I got a hot tip from a mate that there could be some big muddies out that way so I'm gonna take you guys along on a solo mud crab hunt today so that'll be cool Angie and Oakley will hang back chill out Hold the fort because uh, it could be real heavily midgy. Oh. So um, we'll see. Oh, Oaks is attacking. Oaks is attacking. Okay, so tire pressure's down. We'll get all set up here and then I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do because I've got my new crabbing tool that I'll show you how to make basically a, uh, a crab hook. So let's get into it. All right, so the other day I went to Bunnings and picked this up. So it is galvanized rod i guess you could say so it's six mil thick and it is three meters long so i'm going to chop this up into a few little lengths so bear with me safety goggles first doing it with one hand is always a little bit sus okay so we've got one nice long length that'll be to get the crabs out of the deeper holes and then we're going to chop this in half. You kind of bend it with your hand, which is nice. So that's those there. So we've got three nice lengths, two short ones, one nice big long one. So then I'll show you bending those up. So what I'm going to do is take that there. Sorry, I'm trying to film this myself, by the way. Okay, you get the idea, but we make there. Cool. All right. A little bit long that hook. That should still work. So I'll make the others just a tiny bit shorter so there's not such a length there and we'll be away laughing. All righty, ready to rock. I look like a proper mud crab geek, but that's okay. I'm not wearing any of my nice clothes for this. <laughs> so I've made these three up. This should do the job. So I'm just going to head up this system here. I'm hoping there are some big muddies here because it doesn't look like it's a really frequented spot. Cool. Across here. Oh, it's not too deep. And always keeping a lookout for crocs. Apparently there's not been any crocs around here for a long time. And the reason they can tell is because dogs swim at the water and one hasn't been taken in years. So I suppose that's reassuring. Unless the crocs only have a taste for human flesh. <laughs> oh man, it looks pretty crocky. <laughs> All right, so this is just gonna be a guess. I'm just gonna have a little play around in here see if I can see some big mud holes all right let's get into it it's gonna be hard work mullet in the shallows little baby ones it's still a bit rocky for my liking so I'm gonna Carry on. This remains of an old trap. All right, so I'm retracing my footsteps now because it's still too deep and murky up ahead. There's just too 
much of a risk that it could hold a crocodile. So <clears throat> I don't think a mud crab's worth it. It's not worth my leg anyway. So I'm gonna see if I can find another tributary. Painfully slow moving through these systems because probably can't tell but it's actually really deep in the middle so I don't want to lose both my GoPros. <laughs> so I've kind of got to go around the outskirts and that's slow. That's looking a bit crabbier. That's definitely looking a bit crabbier. All right. Let's get in the muck. Well, wasn't for lack of trying. Been out here for about an hour, but not a crab in sight. I've seen a couple of tiny muddies, but I'm just not seeing the terrain that's gonna work. It's a little bit too deep up that way and then turns to rock again. No, unfortunately guys, I don't think I'm gonna be getting a mud crab today. So I'll check out the river mouth and then I'll head back to Ange for lunch. A lot of mullet. Whew. Tough slog. Gosh, there's a lot. Well, if we want some oily fish for dinner, <laughs> I know where to come. There's Ange out there. Quite a big turtle. He or she is a little bit stranded until the tide comes back because it gets really shallow through here. <laughs> so cool. Having a munch on the on the bottom. Oh, it looks like Ange is playing with oaks. We'll go over and see them. Yeah. Here's the team. I didn't know enough. Hey. And now we're gonna play. Yeah. What a good spot. And the wind has taken the midges away. Yeah, it's been amazing. Good temperature. Yeah. It's really cool out there. Definitely not a dive spot. And maybe not a crabbing spot. No. Learning to crawl. Yeah. Crawl and roll. Learning to crawl. Oh, Superman. Good boy. Getting mobile. How good is this spot? Benning. Wow. So we stayed at the caravan park last night and now we are here first thing this morning. The only unfortunate thing is there was a huge bushfire overnight and the entire area is hazy as you would have seen from the drone. That's okay. Swell is pumping out here. So uh, the water clarity is not looking too good from the air. So I may not be able to dive, but we'll see. Maybe later on today at a higher tide, it'll be fine. So we're gonna go for a little gander around the place. There's some cool cliffs this way, and there's a really nice beach behind. So we'll check both of those out. Check that out. Man, that's a cool shell. It's huge. 
Oh, such a cool beach. Really cool beach. Ange was saying it's like a South Australian beach. It's not like WA. So cool. Look at my shells. <laughs> Look at them all. <laughs> oh, cool. Very cool. Oh, very nice surprise. Much nicer than I expected. Stunning. So pretty gutter didn't find any big mud crabs yesterday. Found a few little ones, but they were definitely undersized. Didn't even see some big holes, so I'm not actually sure they're there. But in Roebuck Bay, back in Broome, did go on an awesome mud crabbing mission with Tim. And he showed me all the ropes, what to look for, how to get them. He showed me how to make those steel loops. So that was an awesome experience. Then we cooked them up that night, had coconut chili mud crab that him and Alex made. That was so good. And there was so much left over because we got five big mud crabs each, which is our catch limit. There was enough left for the night afterwards as well. So I'll roll some of those clips now. Oh, you'd be okay, eh? Whoa! <laughs> you could get lost out here, hey? Oh, sure. Swim your way out. Set. That's the ground wide drive up to 120. Okay. That one's just a bit small. A bit small? Just a touch. Uh -huh. But the claws aren't very big anyway. You no. You can shove them back in. Uh -huh. But nice. Cool. First one on the board, kind yeah. of. Oh. Nice. So whereabouts was he? Just in. Just in the air, okay. Awesome. Yeah, it's funny. You got cords straight in the eye. That one looks too small, hey? Yeah, that one's too small. Yeah, and then he digs in. Yeah, you want Oh man, that's cool. Still tastes good. He's a tank. Oh yes. Big claws on him. He put up a fight. Are you going here? Nice. Good fun. Good fun. Look at this one. Cool. And this is the result of this morning walk another collection to add to the list of the collection that Chris got already in the truck we've got some knives we've got some torches now we've got some shells but they're some very nice shells so that's cool so yeah we just came back from our walk Oakley has been transferred to front facing this morning which is really seems to like you can see whatever we're seeing as well which is pretty cool proper little explorer very curious yeah, we've done some cool little adventures and experiences recently. In Broome, we took him to Coconut Wells, which is just above Broome. And at a certain tide, which was, I think, a nine meter tide, a high tide, you just wait for the tide to go down. And then you can just take some floaties. We took his little boat and you can actually drift towards the ocean, which was pretty fun. It was kind of like nice and slow, which is perfect as well. It's 
it's not like too like high current or anything like that water temperature was a little bit cool so it still wasn't a huge fan but it's got some progress so i'm hoping by exposing him more and more that he's really getting used to it and i guess yeah next we're going more towards the coast we're going to spend quite a lot of time by the coast we're not going to do much inland mission with him so yeah we're going to have lots of opportunities to expose him more and more to the ocean which is going to be amazing and now yeah we're going to chill for the rest of the day in this beautiful spot not too much to do around here unfortunately but it's still stunning so we're gonna make the most of it We've had a nice relaxing afternoon here today. It's been really good. Wind's picked up, but that's actually made it a bit cooler and it's keeping any midges or sandflies away, which is good. This spot's been really nice. It's a shame I couldn't dive, but uh, yeah, oh well. The Dampier Peninsula was a bit better for the diving, so I cannot wait to get back there. So maybe uh, next, maybe next season, Ange, who knows, maybe. So we didn't do too much at James Price Point. We went there, didn't do any filming because it was really busy, really, really windy. But I was really fortunate when I was in Broome, I ran into an old friend, Dan, who I knew in London that I worked with. And he is now a pilot. So he took me up in this awesome old, like 1978 Cessna. Went up over the Dampier Peninsula, got to see the whole thing. It was really, really cool. And then did a perfect landing went over cable beach saw Ange hanging out with alex and tim which was wicked and then flew in perfect landing so i'll roll those clips as well yeah okay and that kind of blocks your view a bit yeah yeah
So that was sort of a once in a lifetime experience. Yeah, that was wicked. So now I have got two sweet potatoes cooking. Got two big beef steaks and two corn cobs to have tonight. So it'll be good. Food's looking good. The sunset is happening. And she's just got Oakley on her tummy so that he falls asleep. I am going to try a beer for a change. This is called a Beer Farm Brekkie Scroll Pastry Stout. Decadent coffee sticky. Now it's 9.5% alcohol. It was brewed with Old Bridge Cellars and Stomp Coffee Roasters. So it's a little bit of a, a combination of two big companies. And this is going to be interesting. So let's give it a crack. Nine point five percent. Wow, it's actually pretty good, man. It tastes strong. It tastes really strong. It almost tastes like you're drinking a spirit. <laughs> Like Man, nine percent, nine point five. Oh, no, thank you. It's thick. I wouldn't say I would drink more than one at a time. That's for sure. You probably get drunk by yourself. Mm. Actually, it's so thick. I don't know if I would get drunk. I'm just going to into a, go into a coma. Yeah, it's pretty good. For my first beer recommendation, I don't think it would be this. But if you really like a stout, give this a crack. I think it was a limited edition run, but it's pretty good. You can taste the coffee. I can't taste brekkie scroll, but yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's have some food. Yes. Ready? Sweet. Yeah. Good morning from Camp Codron. We have officially left the Kimberley. Unfortunately, we had an amazing time there though. We can't wait to get back, but the temperature was starting to get a bit too hot with the winter coming to an end. So here we are in the Pilbara, but again as well, I guess not too long because we're heading towards Exmouth. We were supposed actually to be in Exmouth for July for the peak of winter, but yeah, it kept being postponed because, you know, change of plans, the giving shirt and just spending a bit more time in general in all these areas. So now we have no regrets at all. We actually spent two nights here in Cape Codron, which is a really nice area. We came here three years ago, but I didn't realize it's such a vast area. So the great thing is you can kind of like find your own little nook to camp. So this is where we camped last night, just by the beach. Very nice and quiet. Well, there's kind of like a lot of cars in the distance over there. Chris went crabbing again. There's a creek in the other side. Unfortunately, it did catch two crabs, but they were not huge. So that would have not been enough for a meal, unfortunately. So yeah, we are leaving now. There are as well a lot of midges, so unfortunately it's not great for Oakley. He got bitten yesterday and I think it doesn't really react well to them. Despite us buying like a little spray and broom for midges, that doesn't seem to work very well for him, unfortunately. And as well, I think we are in the thick of the six months sleep regression at the moment. So it's safe to say that we are not sleeping well at all. So yeah, we're gonna put this little man in his car seat. He'll get like a good nap at least for the drive ahead of us. And yeah, hopefully we will see you next time in next month. Sorry, this episode is a bit all over the show and a bit shorter than normal. Uh, it's hard sometimes to adjust between, I guess, life on the road life for like i guess youtube and as well being a parent we're trying to balance it all and yeah this time i guess we focus a bit more on quality time and a bit less uh, filming so but we'll be back with uh, some more epic spare fishing and potentially boat content very soon so stay tuned and we'll see you very soon <laughs>